All right, gang, I am off to the cinema tonight to go check out Before I Fall. Nothing that could wake me. You know, every once in a while, I like to go check out a movie that I know absolutely nothing about. Sometimes it's good to go into a film from a completely fresh and neutral-minded prerogative. And I really know very little about Before I Fall other than what I've read online. And from what I've read, the film is like Groundhog Day for the young adult crowd. Bummer. <laughs> right, gang, I just got out of Before I Fall. Maybe for you there's a tomorrow, but for some of us, there's only today. You know what I gotta say, this movie wasn't uh, nearly as craptacular as I was expecting. <laughs> what are you doing? What happened last night? As a matter of fact, uh, I actually liked it. I'm embarrassed to say how much I like this movie. Your heart. Am I breaking it? I kind of uh, <laughs> jokingly referred to this film earlier as like uh, Groundhog Day for the young adult crowd. Bummer. And you know what? That is not an uh, inaccurate description of this movie at all. Like imagine like if you were like a screenwriter goes into a studio head's office and says, imagine Groundhog Day meets Mean Girls but with a much more solemn and somber tone. And I think that's what you would get with Before I Fall. And despite the fact that this movie is woefully derivative to its core of that very classic and iconic 1993 Bill Murray comedy, uh, nevertheless, this movie is kind of compulsively watchable <laughs> on multiple levels. Oh my god. The film stars Zoe Dutch, or is it Duetch? Dutch? She is, of course, the uh, daughter of Leah Thompson. Marty? Why are you so nervous? And holy crap, I mean, every movie I see her in, it's like, I'm watching Leah Thompson from the 1980s. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Believe me. It makes perfect sense. She is a, and you know, she is a very, I think, uh, confident and headstrong actress who happens to have been in a lot of really crappy movies. Now she's been in some good movies that I've liked, like Everybody's Got Some, the uh, Richard Linklater spiritual sequel to Days and Confused. And she's also been in some really craptacular films like Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates. And oh my God, Vampire Academy, so awful. But you know what, I, I really like the fresh face sincerity that she brings to all of her parts and I think that she's really the dramatic anchor that holds this entire film together despite its derivativeness. <laughs> Let go! <laughs> And what you need to know is this. She plays this uh, young high schooler. I mean, she is an eternally youthful actress. I have this funny feeling that Zoe Dutch is going to be playing high school uh, teenage girls for the next 10 years of her career. I'm eating, get out. Oh, you guys. But nevertheless, she plays this high school teenage girl uh, who is in this very popular mean girl uh, clique. And by mean girls, I mean, uh, they're just mean to everybody around them. They're basically, they're cast iron bitches. <laughs> What's she doing here? Watch this. Psycho! And they don't care uh, how badly they make other people feel. This whole high school thing's just a blip. They go to this uh, massive uh, party on Valentine's Day Eve, and at the end of the party, there is this massive car crash. And Zoe Dutch's character wakes up the very next morning, very much like Bill Murray did in Groundhog's Day. Then put your little hand in mine. Then and then she realizes, holy shit, I am back to the beginning of the day that just passed. <sighs> Mommy said 
if you have to get up? It's Saturday. Maybe for you there's a tomorrow. I've been having deja vu all day long. Are you okay? Of course, this movie's premise is not original <laughs> because the film showcases her living the same day over and over again and her coming to the realization that there is no real way of her to stop this really annoying and potentially psychologically damning cycle that's in her life. And as the film progresses, you get to see her reliving various details of her life and uh, from that day and her trying to make little changes here and there while trying to figure out what in the hell is actually going on and what is causing this. The only way to escape is to change. Watch out for the trap. What trap? <laughs> I had to do something that would make a difference. Uh, on the positives, I will say this. Uh, first of all, this is a surprisingly well shot film. I, I really like the cinematography in this film. Um, I like the sort of the dark and murky uh, color palette uh, that is presented on screen. And uh, there are times where I thought the film was really picturesque. I think it's a very, it's a very well shot film. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it's kind of so funny. I also really like the synth heavy music score in the film. Again, kind of gives it this uh, weird retro 80s vibe. Maybe things could change. And maybe I could change them. It's too late. It's never too late. And you know what? All of the actresses that are playing the uh, quartet of girls in this Mean Girls click are really, really solid and you totally buy into their chemistry. You totally buy that they're lifelong friends who have a lot of anxieties and a lot of vulnerabilities uh, that are buried deep beneath their outwardly stone cold facades as Mean Girl bitches. Snapchat alert. Rob is totally puking in the kitchen sink. Oh, I want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. And in particular, Zoe Dutch. Like, Zoe Dutch, I think, uh, gives a thanklessly decent performance here because um, she really has a a larger character arc in this film that I was frankly expecting. And Screw college. Thanks, guys. It has no dairy. Oh, you're so close, shit. No, really, it's on already. Okay. You can shut up now. What? And uh, again, she's really emotionally grounded. This is not a film that's played for laughs like Groundhog Day. Hey, Phil! Phil? Takes its subject matter seriously. Uh, I, I think it takes its high school setting very seriously. It takes these characters very seriously. And um, I think that uh, the film uh, is emotionally tough to sit through at times. And that was kind of frankly surprising to me. Regardless of anything I do or say, the day starts and ends the same. But there are a few things that don't work about Before I Fall. Uh, the film has this voiceover narration that's sprinkled throughout the narrative, and I don't think that that really works. I think it is utilized with a bit too much blatant obviousness. We really don't need characters pontificating on things that are happening on the screen. I think that is the product of lazy screenwriting. I really think that Before I Fall sort of writes itself into a corner in the final 15 or 20 minutes, and I don't think it really has really any idea of how it should end and then when the film does sort of end I think it left me asking a few more questions about its premise than I really should have. Bummer. Normally speaking when it comes to like most young adult films I'm pretty much like But you know what, this is a young adult film done relatively well and I've sat through so many terrible ones and a few starring Zoe Dutch. Before I Fall is completely derivative of Groundhog Day. Nevertheless, I found it interesting. I found it compelling. I found it uh, a much better acted film than I was expecting going in. And I don't think this is worthy of theatrical consumption, but I do think that it is definitely a worthy rental going forward when it's theatrical shelf life ends. If I was going to relive the same day over and over, I want it to be a day that would make a difference. But not just for me. So there you go. There's my review of Before I Fall. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the film. If you could like this video, I'd really appreciate it. If you could subscribe to my channel, give me some subscribe love. That would mean the world to me. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you at the movies. Phil Connors, man! <laughs>